So, um, questions, queries, quandaries. Hey, y'all hadn't heard that in a while. Um, if you have any questions, so the way we're going to try and do this, I have no idea how this is going to work or if it's going to work, but you know what? Gosh, darn it. I wanted to try because I guess there's a dark, dark world in which we're doing this in the fall, but who knows? Um, so you can drop uh, a question in chat. You can uh, go to Piazza right now. I've turned on live Q and A. And so you can post questions there as well. Um, so yeah. Um, morning announcements as I, I see it's back to normal in this kind of, I mean, we're back to normal, except I don't usually like, all right, let's talk about class. I'll bring in my sword. All right, let's talk about class. Let me put my sword back. Doink. Okay. Um, Y'all got that email about how the grading works. Uh, the amusing thing about that email about how grading works is that was never sent to the faculty. Um, the only way I got it is someone was kind enough to forward it to me when I asked nicely on Piazza. This morning, the associate dean of C's sent it to the faculty, just like, oh, hey, this was sent to the students. And we're just kind of like, great, thanks. Um, I know that there are a lot of questions still, and I'm not even talking specifically about 3240, that there's a lot of questions still about how this is going to work. Um, you know, uh, I, I will communicate to you as I understand things as best I can, particularly with this new GC grade. Um, we are going to have a uh, undergraduate curriculum committee meeting for the, the department on Friday. We have one every Friday. Um, and we're going to talk about this. So specifically things like, I mean, this doesn't matter as much probably to y'all because you've already had 2150, but you know, you have to have a, you know, we have that C minus in 2150 rule. Well, the C minus is in the GC range, but there's not really a delimiter there. So how are we going to manage that? So we, we're going to be talking about all those things and how that works. And we will communicate that to the students as soon as we can. Um, and also to the faculty because the faculty don't really know what's going on really um, either. Um, so I know you have questions. I've, I've expressed to um, anyone that listens in the administration that telling a bunch of, you know, high achieving UVA, you know, go get them students like we have to just chill and it works out. Uh, that I'm going to cut it. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I'm trying to find out what I can on your behalf. And when I have concrete actual information, I'll make sure it's shared with you. Um, but just know that this is the first we've heard of how this was going to work um, and the dates and all of that. Um, you know, we're asking questions like, how do we get grades into SIS? Do we have to know every student's decision? Does Collab do this automatically for us? Um, what if a faculty member decides, oh, it's through a C? Well, I've decided a C now is a 95, you know, or I've decided a C is a 55. You know, is that allowed? I mean, those are extreme examples, but. I kind of want to know what's happening or maybe you want to stay on the letter grade and then something horrible happens. Heaven forbid something horrible happens after the, the deadline. Um, is there any sort of um, anything you could do or do we give you an IN? So anyway, uh, if you, um, it, yeah, if you have any questions, yeah, hit me. Um, so it's not more of a question. Um, the UVA actually sent us this email about how the whole um, switching to credit and no credit is going to work. So on SIS, they've added an option for us to edit our enrollment. And you basically yep. just click on something until the 29th. And I think they're pausing our enrollment for fall 2020 for four days so we can do that at the end. Yeah, that that's correct. Yeah, all of that stuff that was in the email. Um, so that's, you know, from, from from the student perspective, the mechanics of it, you know, how you go in and make that change um, after the 24th, I believe was the, it was like, it's from Friday the 24th through Tuesday the 28th um, is your window to, to switch back to letter grade. Um, the problem is, so, so you have to make that decision and wh you know, which way you want to go there. But, you know, I, I, I think there's, there's still a lot of questions about um, what happens if a faculty, like it ain't gonna be me, but what happens if a faculty member decides to get creative with how they decide where a C is? Right. Um, 
um so one question that i would have do you know why uva wouldn't just do pass fail for everyone like just man like cross the board why would they not mandate it yeah um one of the main reasons is um these are hypothetical because i do not pretend to understand how our provost thinks um but there are students who are applying to grad schools that like particularly med schools that if they've, you know, were working, you know, if they were on track for an A in, you know, organic chemistry and they're still doing fine, they really want that A on their transcript, not a CR because they think it's going to look better for grad school application. So there, there are definitely students who really, really, really want that letter grade for the next stage in education. I, I agree that um, students who are just going to go into industry probably doesn't matter okay that's interesting thank you for the for the note that rotc prefers the letter grades for um i i don't, I don't know how that's calculated into ranks or um i mean i think because everyone comes out at the same rank but how you know placement or things like that matter um the other is they didn't want my guess is they didn't want students to feel cheated out of work that was done prior to spring break because in reality you come back from spring break it's only about a month and it depends on the class how much is the work is before and after um but that's my guess as to why they didn't mandate it okay that makes sense again i and like i said on the post on piazza take everything you hear from any faculty member with a giant grain of salt because most of us are including me we're hypothesizing based upon the information that we have and we don't have perfect information and it and that's evidenced by the fact they didn't even send us this blessed email so there you go. Anyway, uh, anything else logistics wise? Uh, uh, quiz four is just about done. This one took a little bit longer to get graded. Sorry about that. Um, so we should be able to give those scores back to you very, very soon. Um, if you have, good question, if you have a perfect on, on the guided practice score up to this point, do you, should you submit it? Let me, I'll answer it this way. You don't, you don't have to. You don't have to. I would like for you to do the activity because I think it's a good learning experience. Um, but no, you do not have to. If you don't, if you don't want to do it, by all means, you are welcome to not do it. But at least, you know, go through the exercise of thinking about it. Um, other scores. I haven't done a push to, to dashboard in a, a few days. And I know that probably your sprint scores need to be there too. So we're catching up on those. Anything else? Anything else I'm missing logistics wise before you get going? All right. I don't see anything on the piazza, so let's jump. I don't want this. Okay. I have a quick uh, lecture recommendation. Oh, please. Yeah, hit me. Uh, I think it'd be interesting to hear about your. Uh, kind of your history between graduation and where you are today, especially your software engineering experiences. Oh God, do you really want to hear about me working at IBM for a year and a half? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, sure, I mean, we, I certainly could do that. Um, Doesn't have to be long. That was a dark, dark time in my history. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I, I honestly, I honestly, I thought someone was going to say we want more of Sammy playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> um, but, but thank you for the suggestion. Yeah. I mean, um, I'd be happy to talk about that. I, I don't have near as much industry experience as um, some other folks in industry in our, our faculty do. Um, but do you think you could talk is. about open source development at all? Sure. That's a good one. Yeah. That's, that's a great suggestion. Um, let me make notes of these. I really, really should be writing these down. Um, um, there's actually um, some really good material on just overall free open source, free and open source um, software and how do you get involved in projects and that sort of jazz. So that, yeah, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Anything else? Cool. All right. So... Is this gonna work if I move it over here? Oh, zoom the share. Okay, there we go. All right, I wanted it on this screen so I could be looking at you while I was actually talking. Okie dokes. So, 
hopefully you watched the videos from the past uh, couple days. Um, the ones on licensing and the ones on, specifically the one that I did um, on um, ethics and the code of ethics. So the idea behind what I want us to do today is to kind of go through the, this code of ethics again, kind of talk about the high level aspects of it, and then we're going to break out I'm going to see if this works. Uh, do the breakout rooms and hopefully you'll be in, you'll be in groups of like three ish to talk about the scenarios that are in guided practice H. So under student resources, we go under guided practice and we go under doo -doo 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 -doo, guided practice H. So what we'll do is we'll uh, do some high level discussion about these uh, eight principles. Okay, um, I'll take any questions. I'll split you into groups uh, for you to discuss these scenarios and to come up with your answers to these questions. And you, you'll jot down some really quick answers. We'll come back together and I want us to uh, hopefully talk about some of the, the solutions here and what we might do. Um, and then we'll, then we'll call it. That's the plan. So, actually I guess, Put this, I need to have the chat window open so in case someone asks a question. Okay, got the chat open. All right, so something that makes sense, holla. Okay, so the idea behind this whole code of ethics that the ACM and I, well, let's talk about the ACM and I triple E for a second. Uh, you know, I kind of take it for granted that you even know what I'm talking about when I say these things. And you might know them in the concept of, oh, I'm part of the student ACM group or whatever that is. Well, what does it mean to even have professional organizations? So the ACM, the Association for Computing Machinery, is the group that is most concerned specifically with computer science. They are, that is all they do is just computer science um, and, you know, kind of the things on the fringes, you know, some information systems, a little bit of IT, that sort of jazz. Um, as a organization, the ACM does everything from lobbying in Washington for policies uh, to uh, sponsoring conferences. So for instance, the conference that I was running crashed into the ground, however you want to think about it, was an ACM conference. So when it really hit the fan when we were in Portland, we were calling ACM headquarters in New York saying, what do you want us to do? How do we do this? Yada, yada, yada. Um, other things that the ACM does uh, is they do um, uh, the digital library. So if you've ever logged into uh, the UVA um, the UVA library and done searches through various different um, databases, one of them is the ACM digital library, where all of the publications are that the ACM sponsors. So these would be all the papers that come from conferences. These could also be the things that come from uh, journals. Um, and there's magazines that they put out, communications, the ACM. So the idea is to like continuously promote uh, computer science and learning and what students uh, could do, should do, what we do in, you know, in the profession, okay? Now the IEEE, um, IEEE itself is not computer science. IEEE has everything in it. It's actually, I think IEEE has electrical engineering, elect elect in the, in the, those, are the, those are the E's in IEEE. Um, Within IEEE, there is a subgroup called the IEEE Computer Society. And the Computer Society is the one that is kind of like the ACM, except it's within IEEE. So they do the same things that ACM does. They do lobbying. Uh, they'll get uh, faculty members, for instance, to go to Washington and sit on, you know, go into those. We've seen, all seen those rooms where the, the, in the, the, the House and the Senate where there's a panel of the senators and the Congress people and you know there's a person there with a little tent card in front of them. It's like, hey, you should do this because reasons and they go blah, 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 took too much time, you know, all that sort of jazz. Um, they also have uh, IEEE uh, Explore, <laughs> Explore, which is their digital library. Um, some conferences are sponsored by both IEEE and ACM. Sometimes you need all the monies. Uh, sometimes conferences are just sponsored by IEEE. Sometimes it's tough to keep the two separate, um, but they do join up from time to time. So for instance, every six years or so, IEEE and ACM get together to write down what they consider, this is what should be in a computer science undergraduate curriculum. And some of those curricular guidelines are some of the stuff we're using to do the redesign of our curriculum. And another thing they did is this, the code of ethics. So 
as our professional organizations, they took it upon themselves and rightfully so to try and provide some sort of some sort of guidance for professionals in the field when they run into tricky situations. Now, this doesn't cover everything, as I mentioned in the previous video. It doesn't cover, you know, some some HR sort of things, but it does cover what you should be thinking about and prioritizing as a software engineer. So it came down to the eight principles, which I still think is stupid, particularly the fact that they're capitalized, because it really makes it seem like there should be some sort of coat of arms somewhere where there's a different picture that represents. Anyway, they are presumably in some sort of priority order, kind of, in that your first responsibility is to the public, to ensure the public safety uh, and the public interest. Uh, the second is then to your client and your employer, making sure that as an engineer, you are meeting the client's needs, but also doing what you should be doing to make sure the business, the company uh, prospers. Um, you know, things like, oh, this, 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 this client really needs this piece of software. Oh, I'll just give it to you for free. Okay, that obviously is not benefiting the employer because there's a contract there. And conversely, you don't want to screw the client just because you're trying to maximize profits. There is a happy medium there. Um, the product, you always should be trying to build the highest quality product that you can. And anytime you are asked to build something that is not of high quality, you are to question that in some way and try to find a, a proper way through to then put together something that is good and reasonable. Uh, your judgment, uh, basically, this covers things such as conflict of interest. So um, you shouldn't be contracting with, a, you shouldn't be working for one company and contracting with their direct competitor on the side. That's, that's an obvious no-no. Um, but things just like uh, you interviewed at a place or you visited a place and you signed a non-disclosure agreement. There are reasons why those are there and, and you need to honor them. Uh, for management, this is kind of goes off to the side. Management needs to recognize that uh, software engineers are people. They are not just cogs in the machine. And that the harder you push a software engineer, goes back to the 40-hour work week, the more likely you're going to get lower quality software. So there are guidelines in there about, um, you know, not crunching people, time crunch, not like can squish crunch. Um, but also things such as um, educating your employees. What, what, are the, what is the sense of in, sensitive information in your organization? How do you make sure that that information is protected in the right way? How do you make sure that people know to not leave their computer open when they go get a snack? You know, that sort of thing. Um, because corporate espionage is a thing uh, for the profession. Uh, making sure that you are always promoting software engineering as a positive, wonderful, good thing, not oh my God, I am locked in a cubicle, slamming Mountain Dew, red, purple, blue, leet. Um, and I've got seven bags of open Cheetos and Doritos and I can't stuff my face enough with that yummy, yummy, cheesy puff. Um, yeah, don't do that. Um, your colleagues, um, I know that some of you are on very good teams and you're enjoying your, your experience right now. And some of you are on less than good teams. Um, and this might have even, some of it started well before um, the great fall, so to speak. Um, it's going to happen, right? You are going to be on good and bad teams throughout your entire career. And learning how to work with people is, is part of the hard lessons, unfortunately. Um, sometimes people are just captain loser pants. And learning when it's time to go to management and say, look, this person is a captain loser pants. We need to do something about this is a hard skill to learn. Uh, I can't even argue I am anywhere close to being good at that because there are certainly times when there are people in our organization where I'm just like, I don't think this is the way it should happen. Um, but then let's just say you have a, a, a team member that's struggling. Um, there is an ethical clause that talks about, you know, lifting everyone up and trying to be a positive and supportive person and trying to help people get educated so that they become a more um, contributing member of the team. There's gray areas for everything. There's no hard and fast rule. I wish I could give you that. But, you know, it, it, working with others can just be tough.
And then from a self perspective, you need to be able to do self learning. You need to be able to go out and say, okay, Django, man, that was awesome. I used Django for all this 3240 class. And this was the hot stuff two years later. What's Django? No one's using this piece of garbage anymore. That's not going to happen. But you know, you, you get what I'm saying, right? You, you need to be able to go off and learn new techniques, new libraries. You can't just say, well, I am just the Django person because that's just not going to cut it. So um, I mentioned that probably my favorite line through all of this. Oh, uh, where is it? I guess I can search for it. The code is not a simple ethical algorithm that generates ethical decisions. Okay. It's not an ethical algorithm that generates ethical decisions. With that in mind, let's go look. Well, first off, are there any questions about any parts of the code? Uh, I'll pause for a moment for group chat in Zoom or Piazza. You can post a question. Um, any questions from the pre previous videos? As I slam my water here. I have to admit, I love having having y'all here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, 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 for coming and joining me because I, I miss, I miss talking to people. I do. I do. You know, I, there, you know, my, my job is, you know, a few hours a week, I stand up in, in front of a room and I get to see all your happy shining faces and the, the back, the tops of many of your heads and your laptops as you're looking at, not y'all probably. Um, cause I, I know some of the folks on the call and I know y'all are one, you're all wonderful people. Um, but I, I just miss talking to people. I mean, I, I love my wife and my daughter, but it's, it's nice to, to chat with people. Even if, you know, you're not saying anything back, but that's okay. It's, if you don't have any questions, that's fine. Okay. So here's what I want us to do, okay? Um, there are two scenarios here. Uh, the scenario with Andrea Babbage and the scenario with Larry Jones. Um, they have interesting challenges coming up. So here's what I hope is going to happen. I'm going to, well, first off, I'm going to stop my share. So I can see the screen. Okay. I'm going to try to do the breakout room thing. And then um, we're going to do breakout rooms until 1140. Okay. So 15 minutes. So you don't need to write down, don't write, you don't need to take this time to write down your full answers to the guided practice. Okay. This is not due until Saturday. You can just make some quick notes, but I want you to just talk about the scenarios. Okay. So once we do that, um, I'm going to try and jump into the meetings and kind of see what's going on, if I do it right. Uh, and then we'll come back and talk about these scenarios and what you are going to do. Any questions about how this is going to work? I just chased off two people. <laughs> Three people. How many people are going to drop? Okay. All right, we're going to try it. Six and a half hours later. Okay. So... Let's start with the first scenario. Andrea Babbage, um, working for uh, a company that is uh, working for the Department of Defense, testing the software using controlling an experimental jet fighter. And she's the quality control manager. Um, and that she had some instances where she believes that the plane is going to crash, but um, they patched it. And when they patched it, all of the tests now show it's legit. And the software works, but Andrea's not convinced about this. Um, she wants to do more testing, but there is a lot of pressure to sign off because she has to do the final sign off in order for it to deliver to the government. So what does she do? Uh, I think that was the first question. Identify two principles along with the appropriate clauses. And then what should Andrea do next? So first I'd like to hear um, what clauses did you find? Um, if you want to just drop them in chat, you can do that. If you want to unmute um, and say them out loud, that's great too. Um, but can I get some suggestions, please? Public 104, let's start with that one. Public 104, let me move the chat window over here. Disclose to appropriate persons or authorities any actual potential danger to the user. Yeah, there might be some danger. <laughs> jet farter crashing. Um, the question is, is who are the appropriate persons or authorities in this case? So discussing, so great, I see judgment, I see management, or get to those. Uh, but for 1.04, does anyone have any suggestions about who Andrea should go to? 
Again, you can drop in chat or you can unmute. Either one's fine. Project manager, yep. Seems to be having some problem with that. Go straight to the Department of Defense. That is an interesting idea is to go, uh, a, I mean, I'm going to be straight up front. I don't think there's any, okay, there are a few like completely wrong answers probably in, in some of this, but this is an interesting one. Do you go around the employer to the customer who then is going to be asking, why are you doing this to our software? Consult HR regarding contract details. I think that's an excellent suggestion. Um, we thought she'd definitely get fired. So, so yeah, I agree. I, she would definitely get fired and, and there could be major repercussions um, if she went directly to the Department of Defense. So that's a, that's a tough one to think about. There is the super crazy, you know, let's go, let's, let's go talk to um, Wolf Blitzer sort of maneuver. Um, that one could be kind of tough. So yeah, all the interesting suggestions. Let's look at judgment. So was there one in particular, uh, Ella, particularly in judgment that you're other than all of it? <laughs> um, only endorsed documents prepared. No. Um, I think probably something along the lines of 4.3 um, because she is in the position to ensure that what she's signing off is reliable or is what we assumed at least. Yeah. Um, and her reason for feeling that pressure is mainly from, you know, like her superiors or whoever may be wanting it to just be signed off. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Uh, and, and being able to, to be professionally objective, we could, you know, we could flip on it too. You know, it's like the tests do pass. So that is, it's interesting, a good way of thinking about it. Management 5.12, 5.12. Not punish anyone for expressing ethical concerns about a project. Well, yep. <laughs> definitely, definitely one that's going on right here. Public 1.03. Approve software only if they have well-founded belief. Yep. Very good. Yep. That one talks very specific to this. Um, so what does she do? Let's, 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 let's jump to that now. Um, what, what, what did y'all say? What, what should she do next? I mean, obviously going to the Department of Defense is one of them or, or you know, talking to the project manager. Did anyone have any concrete, here's the plan? Product 3.2. Ensure adequate, yep, I agree. Yep, that's a good one for this one too. So here's ones that have been suggested in the past that I, I think are interesting. Um, come to a compromise or at least propose a compromise in which uh, Andrea requests, um, give me three days to try and ramp up um, some more particular testing. And if I can't find anything in those three days, then I will sign off on it. Um, so that way that she can at least say that she was able to give it her best. Um, you know, at the end of those three days, if she still doesn't feel it's, comf it, it, it's um, safe or not, that would be yet another decision she'd have to make, but I, I, that, that, that might be the safest way to save the contract, save the job, and still feel like she's fulfilling her ethical obligations. Uh, look at the contract details, consult HR regarding the details, since testing is a part of it, and conduct further tests. Yep. Yep. Um, definitely going through HR, uh, talking to HR about any sort of power-based um, influence um, is something that should be done. Other suggestions? I mean, if they That's really, all right, oh, let's, go, let's go with Henry. Henry has, if, if they really roll you over, I don't think that going to Wolf Blitzer thing is actually such a horrible idea. If you consider what happened with Boeing and their software just last year, actually, I mean, in a situation that's like somewhat comparable, actually, I mean, yeah. co huge cost to the company, huge cost in human life. No, that, that, you're right. I mean, the whistleblower, again, I have no way of saying which is right or wrong in any of these hypothetical situations anyway. Um, but yeah, the Wolf Blitzer maneuver. Why did I pick Wolf Blitzer? Um, let's go with Anderson Cooper. I mean, let's, let's, you know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, 
Uh, who else was speaking? There was there was cross talk, and I didn't see who popped up. Um, I was just going to ask a question. Please, Emma. So, um, in the scenario, it notes that Andrea is an advanced or like an experienced software developer. Mm -hmm. Do you? What are your thoughts on like what what would happen? Or what are your what is your advice if she was like the newbie on a team? I mean, obviously she's the quality assurance person, so like she's she has to be experienced. But what happens if you're on a team and you notice for a very high risk software that something's off or not? You don't mm -hmm. feel comfortable with it, mm -hmm. but like you don't have the respect or the like of a very, you know. Yep. Advanced. Um, the, the, so almost always when you are a new person on a team, you have an experienced person on the team that is your mentor. And that person usually is trained in, um, in hopefully in some ways of, you know, helping guide people as they, you know, come into the company and things like that. Um, for instance, we do that with faculty members. Um, when a new faculty member comes into our department, they are assigned a faculty mentor and a buddy. There's, they, they do different things slightly. Um, but, let's say for instance, if someone had a problem with how their promotion was looking or something along those lines um, and they didn't feel comfortable going to the department chair, my mentors, mentees, excuse me, would come to me and we would talk about it in kind of a, in a, in a safe space. Um, and that's probably what would happen here too. Um, you would most likely just talk to whoever your mentor is and say, Hey, look, I saw this. Is this something I'm supposed to be concerned about? What do you think? And hopefully some guidance would be given there. Okay, makes sense. Yep. This might be taking the scenario to like the worst possible case, but in the what if you are like I guess if you are a recent um like like the case we just mentioned, you were just added to the team, you're mm -hmm. very new compared to other people, you have a mentor, and even the mentor kind of is in the worst case is someone that doesn't advise you in a way that um, abides these conduct rules. Yep. And you still feel obligated to put the public, I mean, you should, um, to put the public interest at heart and then make the decision and you get fired. And let's say you go to your next um, job interview for with a different company uh -huh. and you're unable to talk about the reasons why you were fired or any um, conflicts that arise in the previous job, mm -hmm. then how do you go about that? I mean, that's a really <laughs> yeah. specific case, but yeah, it's, it's tough. It really is tough. Um, I, I certainly don't have, I personally don't have the experience to extrapolate to that. Um, thankfully I don't have the experience to extrapolate to that. Um, you know, my, my gut would say that, um, so I have to come at this with my own, you know, ethical foundation, so to speak. And everyone, and, and you know, no, no, no judgment on anyone for who, who works for places that do this sort of software um, or, you know, anything this, this line. But this, this is an instance where I personally would never have taken a job in this sort of environment um, because my anxiety would never have handled it. Um, so it's hard. It's even harder for me to put myself in the situation because it's like, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have even gone, that, gone there. So I'm going to go to the assumption that I somehow, you know, they were offering $11 trillion. And so it's like, okay, I, I work there. Um, I probably would quit before it got to the point. Mm. And I don't know if that's the right answer or not. Um, it, it is going to be different for everyone because there's definitely going to be people who, and this is good because we need people like this who are thinking, no, I want to be that person that gets in the system and make sure that I am protecting people um, and bless those people um, because I, my heart couldn't take it. Um, but let's say they are fired. Um, that type of person probably is excited by that because <laughs> they're like, I fought the system and they move yeah. on. And I cannot put myself in that headspace because I avoid personal conflict when all possible. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, this is a great discussion. Let's get on to Larry really quick. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to stay on too, too, pa too far past noon. Um, although I am super enjoying talking to people. Um, so talking about Larry really quick, 
Um, can we, whoops, wrong, wrong button. Um, can we all agree that Larry goofed up done good? <laughs> um, I don't think we necessarily need to talk about the, the claw. Well, so let's toss them out. Any quick clauses you want to look at? Let's say, obviously, don't put out garbage software is one of the clauses. Three twelve. Oh yeah, yeah. Make sure you're respecting private. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, let's just jump onto the discussion. Okay, so yeah, poor Larry. What mistake did he make? Just put it into one sentence. What 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 did he do? Yeah, yeah, he shouldn't have made security disputable. He should not have offered the non-secure option. This is, this is, I know, I know Larry, like not personally know Larry, but I know this person. This is the person who is in the meeting trying to win the contract, trying to sell themselves and starts talking and stops thinking. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh my gosh. So now what does he do? How does he get himself out of this situation? Well, um, tossing out some ideas, he could have, he could come back and say, um, yeah, I done goofed. Uh, that's not a good option, but you know, this is the price I quoted you and I'm going to put in the security that needs to be there, which kind of looks bad, but you know, he's not putting out bad software then. Um, he could um, say, you know, I did offer that, but upon further reflection, I looked at it and I'm sorry, I have to remove that off the table. And by doing that, he could potentially lose the contract, but he's at least not putting out something garbage. So this is why it's important to do things. Um, yeah, the legality of it. That's a good point. He could go back and say, oh, by the way, I hadn't heard of this thing called HIPAA. I probably shouldn't do this. Um, it'll cost him more with all the lawsuits. Yeah, that's true too. So, um, all good, all good suggestions. So, um, that is probably more than enough for y'all to get going or, or to finish up on your, your guided practice. Uh, hopefully the breakout rooms had some, well, I know they had good conversation because I jumped into most of them uh, or all of them at time to time. So cool. Um, so it was wonderful having you all for a live conversation. Um, it's nice to see folks. It's nice to talk to people. Um, I think the YouTube videos have been good because people have been able to watch whenever they want to. Um, and I know that's, probably beneficial with the rest of your schedule. So I didn't want to do this uh, like all the time, but I'm glad I got to do one. So um, if you want to hang out more, you know, I do this on Tuesdays and we only have a few people come. Um, then if, if it's good for me to do more, just kind of live chats next week, just to, you know, work on sanity and, you know, I don't know, I'll stream more games or something. Um, it's fun to hang out. So uh, should we just put the name and number for the principals also explain? Yeah, I, you should explain. You should explain. So, so for those questions, you should, you know, I chose this one because this, this, and this. Um, so that's kind of reason. Should I put the people I work with? So what you can do, actually, this is something, um, hopefully you got people's computing IDs, but you can, you can either submit your own or you could do a group submission into Gradescope. That's fine too. I, um, if you know the people you were with, you could ask me and I could give you the computing IDs. Either way is fine. Or you could just submit it on your own. I mean, if you don't list the people you worked with, I'm not, it's super hard to check that. Not that I was really checking it too intently before. So I, the reason I was doing it before is because it, it, the way we were getting them into the system, but now it's done differently. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you don't put the other people's computing IDs. So 
Uh, thank you all so much. I will post some stuff next week to close out the semester. We'll finish up the grading. If you want to chat, need to chat, hit me up. Go get lunch. Bye, gang. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. I see all your faces disappearing. One at a time into the mist. Poofing away. Okay. Bye.